Hola. Bueno. Eh. Thank you for joining us this morning. I'm Fernando Paniza. I'm part of the development team in Artech. I work for the Android Generator. And I'll talk about what's new in the Android ecosystem. There are many, many things involved here. We have many news regarding the devices, new types of devices, and the platform itself. There are very relevant news that I want to share with you. But before starting, let me go over my uh, presentations in previous years. Uh, I noticed there is something that has stayed on, and that is the basis of the Android um, ecosystem. It's its variety, its different brands and prices, uh, all ranges and sizes. And the main characteristic of the Android platform that was maintained over the years is what constitutes the measure of success. That is why uh, I find it interesting that other platforms follow suit and copy what we do. And they have decided to copy us, though for many years they said that the size of their phones was ideal and they would never change it. They decided to grow and uh, manufacture larger cell phones. Unfortunately, they are one year later because Android already has a similar size um, cell phones for quite some time. But what happened in Android where well, there are very many relevant news? First of all, one that uh, Eliax uh, anticipated the other day, but now my presentation was ready, so I left it. Uh, for many, Samsung is a synonym of Android. I have a Samsung, I have an Android, that's more or less the same. But that's not the case today. Samsung is doing well, it's the leader in the Android platform, but there are other players in the market that are doing very well with different strategies. They are doing things well. I show here some brands some that we know better than others on this side of the planet, like LG, Motorola, um, and others that are doing very well in the Asian market, Huawei, ZT, and Wyoming. I'll give you some examples of the devices. The first one is LG. LG is the manufacturer that did the Nexus, uh, Nexus 4, Nexus 5. Based on that platform, they did their devices and the G2, G2000, G3, and they were very successful in terms of sales because the hardware is very good and the price is much lower than that of their competitors, Samsung, and the sales were good. The other interesting case in the middle is Motorola. Motorola was a company about uh, to go bust, to disappear from the market, but uh, Google acquired it and they started doing devices with Google stock and two are is uh, Motor, uh, Motorola X and X and the other is mid term it's called Moto G. This is very interesting because it's a device that has very good features, good camera, good hardware, the latest version of the Android system, and it sells for $200 in the US. So they were able to have the uh, best uh, smartphone with the highest sales in Motorola. It was called, um, bought by Lenovo for the Western market, and they're doing very well with this model. Finally, another example, very different, is Xiaomi. This is Xiaomi, for those of you who do not know it. It's a Chinese brand uh, that has a very different strategy. It's similar to the Amazon strategy. They have a modified Android with their own operation system, which is called MiUI, and they sell it in China above all. Today, a few months ago, it, they became the number one sales in Argentina, exceeding Huawei, Samsung, and the others. And uh, they want to expand their sales throughout Asia. And they are planning to expand to the rest of the world. Very interesting success story based on the Android platform. So the success of all these brands 
including Samsung, leads to the global success of the Android platform in terms of sales. I always show you the sales evolution graph. I love figures and I like Android to be the leader. Every year I talk about percentages. It's very hard for the Android percentage market to keep growing because the level is very high. Last year I showed you this graph. I said it's up to 80%. It will hardly grow, I said last year. But this year Android once again uh, proved that I was wrong. It got to 85% of the market. So every 10 cell phones that are sold, eight and a half are Android. Then in the third place you have iOS, second place iOS, and Microsoft is in the third place. The ones that are disappearing from the smartphone world are BlackBerry and Symbian already disappeared. BlackBerry needs to make a drastic change and, le uh, and unless they make a drastic change, they will not uh, stay on. This leads us to absolute numbers. There's a huge figure there. One billion dev active devices. One billion active devices. What does this mean? Um, it means uh, one seventh of the world population is using Android devices in the world and the growth every year is around 44 percent. It's a huge growth. Uh, this is a tremendous figure but things get even more dramatic. Um, there's a program called Android One. I call it the Pink Brain, uh, do you know what I'm talking about? Pinky Cerebro was a um, cartoon character that I loved when I was a kid. These were two mice, and it always started with Pinky asking, what are we going to do today, Brain? And the Brain answered, we'll try to conquer the world. That's Pink and Brain. Well, we want to conquer the world with these cell phones. When they um, launched it, they said, we are going to get the best share of the market. They presented it in India in association with Carbon, Micromax, and Spice. And they do a device with medium characteristics in terms of hard work, but they, um, Google is in charge of the updates and guarantees that they always have the latest uh, operation system version. The cost is $100, and they say, with this, we are going to cover the market of smart devices. In the developed world, it's already glutted. But in emerging markets and in countries where the economy is not that good, there are not so many smart devices. So we are going to really glut the market with this product in emerging economies. But. Uh, all of this has to do with the vertical growth of the Android platform in terms of devices, telephones, and tablets. But there is another growth which is much more important that we are experiencing this year with the horizontal growth of the ecosystem's platform. And we have new devices. We have the smart uh, glasses, the smart watches, were officially launched this year. And there are two other platforms that are trying to take Android to screens like television or the GPS uh, in your car to run Android there and have these um, screens becoming more intelligent. These four types of devices uh, can be compared to four platforms in the Android ecosystem. One is the Google Glass, the other is Android Wear, Android TV, and Android Auto. The last three were launched this year in the last Google Yacht, and Google Glass is already two years old. Let us look at each one of them in more detail. First of all, Android Wear. This is the one I prefer. I think this is going to work very well. This uh, started a long time ago with a um, watch. The, it was a Samsung watch that uh, attempted to do something similar. But Google made it official this year as Android Wear. And uh, it launched three watches. One is Motorola in the middle, LG, and Samsung. 
all of them are based on the Android technology. And what I like about this is the this is a study that reveals that we take the phone and we check to see what happened, why it, 120 times a day that in an average user. I'll do it 400 times a day. But this solves the problem. You just look at your watch and you are not so intrusive in terms of getting your phone from a pocket or a, pur or a purse. Notifications and warnings, this is much easier if you look at the watch. And some people don't like it. They say, I already have a cell phone. Why use another device? Well, the experts, Nicolas and Matias, they are using this device. They told me, you can say that this is going to work well. Uh, we like it, they said. So what are the features? It's based on notifications. You receive notifications uh, in the wear, in the watch or whichever wearable you, you're wearing, and um, you can look at the notifications from your watch. It's interesting because they say that it's not a classical idea that you try to look for an application to launch something. The applications based on the context will appear on the timeline. So if I'm driving, I will have navigation. If an event happens, it will be alarm, etc. So the applications are the ones that call you. You don't go out looking for the application to do something. But you have the voice command and you can call different actions. And we have to rethink the user experience and the user interface. This is very different to what we are used to. Uh, for where applications, we need to think about how to do it, how to do the user interface and the user experience, because we need to interact with this new device. Today, there is one constraint. I think it's um, a hardware. Uh, related constraint. I think it will be modified over time. I think the applications work in full because they are connected to the telephone. If we don't have a telephone connection, the applications work, but they have no internet connection by themselves. So they cannot update applications. If you're talking about the weather, for example, you cannot have updates because of this lack of connectivity. Now, in the case of platforms, we have Android TV. This is probably the fourth attempt of Google to bring intelligence into the televisions. We had Google TV, it didn't work. We had Nexus Q. Uh, for those who came to my presentation, it was a ball that allowed you to watch YouTube on your television. I use it, um, I use it on my desk as a decoration. Then we had Chromecast. Chromecast did quite well. It's sold very well. But with Android TV, um, we are offering something that is more interesting. We have like uh, the full application of Android on a television, and the whole power of Android is there. It's um, focused on games. You have a special control to deal with games and multimedia applications. The content apps are the target for Android TV. Then the other one is Android Auto. This is the one that revealed less data because it will be released next year. Basically, this will consist of an SDK for the car. And with an existing application, you will, it will have to in, implement interfaces. And it will project what we see on the telephone, it will be projected on the screen that we have in the car. It will control different actions by the application through buttons that will be placed in the steering wheel. Uh, it's a hands-off uh, device. And the design has not to distract the driver. It should not be intrusive. It's interesting because this project, I have here a list of the manufacturers that support this project. 
And we will start seeing this next year when this is launched in 2015. We'll see several car makes that will have Android Auto included. Finally, Google Glass. This is a very special project. It's very old. Uh, it's almost two years old. But uh, the community is very active and we have permanent updates. Even though the hardware is the same or very similar to the one launched two years ago, the operation system receives upgrades every two months approximately. It is updated. It has arrangements and patches. The other interesting thing about the platform is that this is the only platform where Google dominates the um, hardware and software, which is very important. Finally, what is the problem? Why is it that people have not adopted these glasses? It's because of the price. It's $1,500 just for, a, for the lens, and it's not affordable for all people. Regarding applications for glasses, we have to think about uh, the user experience and the user interface. We have glasses on top of the eye. We see the screen. We have to use voice uh, commands, and we need a touchpad to move um, across the different items in the application. This is what I want to tell you about the new platforms. Now let's see what happened with Android uh, in terms of versions. As usual, the pie chart shows the latest version for 4, which has 25% of the market. Um, 4.4 and the rest under 4.0 which is the version everybody should be working on and there's one 11 percent of all devices that have two three that um, will disappear with time these are the devices plus le legacy but the most important news with android is the announcement of android l Android L is new uh, Android's version, probably the 5.0 version. L will be the name of some dessert. I don't know which one. And um, Android L is very interesting because it's the greatest change uh, since the very beginning of Android 1.0, which was the most disruptive one. It brings more changes. It's the first beta since Android 1.0. We've never had a beta installed in development devices like the one I have to enter Android L that was not open to public in general. In an Android L, we have like 5,000 new APIs. I don't know if you can read it here on the screen, but we have a list of those that we are including to run memory, batteries, um, devices, USB devices, uh, Bluetooth, etc. But the main change that Android L provides is the new runtime. From the very beginning, the runtime was the Dalvik, and now we change for Art. The new runtime, the new virtual machine of Java, and it suggests or promises improvements in terms of memory and battery life in all the devices. What are the changes in the user interface? We have notifications. This new feature of having notifications in the screen and have them more accessible, easy to view. We have new controls for more sophisticated user interfaces. Uh, to give elevation and shadow to the controls and a new set of animations and transitions to improve the user's interface. Together with the announcement of Android L, they announced material design. This is not um, particular of Android. This is a set of design practices that could be applied to web, web responsive and many other uh, platforms. 
SD platforms. And the metaphor behind material design is that you can design the interface as if they were real life materials. You um, place priorities depending on the colors you use for the different uh, parts of the screen. And in this way, you can get to the user's interface. So this material design not only tells us how, how to draw or what the screen should look like, it gives us guidelines as how to move and interact uh, when the user is using this, how to react. The um, guidelines are very complete. It has information about style, colors, typography, images, animation, how to distribute their layout, what patterns to use or avoid, how to make my application um, more usable. Uh, just to give you an example, this is very abstract, but I brought some screens showing this when it runs. Here we have a screen. If I touch the image, it expands. There's an animation. Uh, here you press one of the lists and the detail comes on the side with an animation. The same is here. I go to a contact and it comes with an animation and all the data appears suddenly. These are some of the things that will be included in the new Android L. So, with GeneXus this year, we worked on the following aspects. In the last event, we talked about the latest betas of Pillow, and today we have Evolution 3 with its release version. We have offline applications and limited connectivity applications with full functionality. We have automatic synchronization that's ready. We have client-side execution and code execution. And this opens up the possibility of uh, having multiple application scenarios already available in Evolution 3. Regarding the user interface in Android in particular, we added controls for different usages. And to make it more user-friendly, we have pop-ups, canvas, suggest, etc. Regarding events, um, somebody asked, we have the possibility of uh, writing more complex things uh, in, and we have new events that are triggered in order to control uh, different aspects of the user interface like control, control value change, the client start, etc. So I invite you to visit uh, GeneXus Showcase showcase.genexus.com. Uh, you will have uh, different examples of high quality apps using the features of Evolution 3. For those of you who have not used it yet, Evolution 3 version 1 is available and this month we'll be releasing you to I uh, invite you to use it, to try it. So, regarding the future, what uh, do we expect to incorporate? First, Android L. Android L will be released uh, end of this year. That's what we expect. And we will add new APIs that will be used on the GeneXus uh, platform. And the new controls included by Android L will be supported, uh, keeping compatibility with former versions of the operation system. Regarding material design, if you're going to do an Android application today, please follow the guidelines, read them. They're very complete and detailed. And today, many of the things that material design suggests can be done with GeneXus Evolution 3. Some things are not available yet uh, because they belong to Android L or need to be added to GeneXus, and I mean by these new animations and transitions, giving the views an elevation and a shadow, and we will be adding a new 
material, some new material. You can go to a screen, touching the colors and uh, having a kind of material theme. Uh, with a material theme that will come by default and we will be setting the colors with the default colors of the application and this will apply to all screens and you will save time in the activity when you make your application. Also, uh, we will be heading towards the wearables. There are two main points here how to incorporate notifications in the wearables, and how to incorporate applications in the wearables. Regarding notifications, notifications are already working on Evolution 3. They are working very well. It, they always tell me about national scoring uh, in soccer. The problem is it didn't tell me it was an Olympic goal, but that's a minor detail. Now. What we want to give is more power to notifications. Uh, notifica notifications are a little bit uh, limited, but we want to have this kind of layout. Uh, we want to define our own layout. We want to send data with the notifications. And the most important thing for me in terms of wearables is that notifications need to have con contextual actions. For example, a notification from an application and I want to answer it. I want to do something to respond with a value or something. I want to do it from my own device. And also we've been working on what happens with uh, applications uh, and the wearables. In the GeneXus laboratory, we are working on the version that uh, Gaston presented, the Salto version, and we want to see what we can do with wearables. And I, want, I have a demo. If it works, it will show you what we've been doing with glasses. We've been working in the laboratory with different companies. On Monday, the Rockerware people presented a solution. The AZ Sport uh, working on a soccer application, recording videos of soccer games. We did a glasses version. And now I want to show you the application of Okaratech. They have an application that is used by agronomists who visit land sites and have to look at um, crops and determine uh, weeds or pests affecting the crops. Let me show you what I'm talking about. So, what you see here is what I see with my eyes. So in order to start the application, I use voice command and, I command and I say, OK, glass. And I have the options. I say farm, farm. So it rec recognizes and this application is pests. And basically what they wanted to show was an image gallery with a different pests and weeds that, and diseases you can find in uh, agriculture. In pests, I will not go into pests because uh, these are horrible creatures. So I'm going to look at weeds, weeds I can find that affect the crops. And agronomists find this very useful because they are walking, and this is like an ed memoir, to realize if this is a kind of thistle that is the black type or the good type, and they can recognize different weeds um, coming up uh, there. And they can check diseases. If I go here, the difference between this and this, I have no idea because I'm not an agronomist. But they should know. They probably know what the difference is. Now. This is an image gallery. It's not magic. 
But the other interesting feature was that I'm in the middle of nowhere, I see the crops, and I want to report an incident, something that is different but I'm not sure of. So I take a picture. Let's imagine that you are the crops and the weeds. <laughs> I'll take a picture. This is the photo. Very nice, very clear, and I accept it. And I forgot to say something. This is an offline application because you are in the middle of nowhere and the image gallery is working offline. It's uh, in a database inside the glass both the pictures and the data. And the picture that I took was taken offline with the device. I'm recording it, and it goes to my image gallery. And here, I can watch the pictures. This is your picture, and it is together with all the pictures that I took during the event. Uh, here we have Nakamoto, Satoshi Nakamoto, also the bitcoins. This is Jodal presenting the bitcoins. But the interesting thing is that the application is based on Genexus um, with a bill that is not uh, really available yet. But uh, the offline application allows me to watch photos and to save photos. And it has um, automatic synchronization. It's always on. So if I go to the web page, this is a web page with a great design saying it's a... See, if I, I have all the pictures that I have taken during the event, but I don't have the pictures that I took of you. I just took it. If everything works and I cross my fingers here, I will do, if I find the mouse, I will do refresh. And it should appear, if everything goes well, your picture should appear here. And it is. It's not clear, but it is. Believe me. So what's the good thing about this? Thank you. Thank you. What's the good thing about this? This picture is not only in the server. Because of the automatic synchronization, it will be present in all the devices of the application. Glasses, which is the experimental device, but all telephones that are using this application with automatic synchronization. So from the server, you can tag it as a weed or a disease or a pest, whatever you want. And all the devices will have it available and can have it as extra data. And this is real time also. So the agronomist may be on a farm taking the picture, and the company in the city may say, oh, they detected this pest. We need to spray the crops with this product. And that's very quick. So going back to my demo, um, this example shows GeneXus power uh, and Evolution 3's power with offline um, applications, sophisticated user interfaces, and the many applications you can use. They are many and varied. So to sum up, um, today, you will make an application. So you think about multiple platforms, which means web, web responsive, iOS, Android, Windows Phone, and wearables. So you have to think about wearables. It's multiple devices. I want to see my application from my home desktop, from a tablet, from a telephone, uh, from a watch. So why not join Genexus and do this automatically with just one database and knowledge base? Genexus provides all this, and we can reach all these devices automatically. Well, thank you so much for coming today. This is the largest meeting of the Genexus community, and we are open to receive your queries, suggestions. Um, we'll be around. So contact us. We are open to uh, your suggestions. Always welcome. Thank you.